salutations, be it your morning, your afternoon, your evening, or somewhere else that has cool sense of time that where time doesn't exist. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be kicking off with a panel today with some really fantastic folks from across the Pylades community. Um, I'll be your host. My name's Lorena Mesa. Uh, I am based in Chicago. I organized and founded the Chicago chapter, done some stuff with Python in my day job, also with the Python Software Foundation, but you're not here to listen to me. Instead, I'm gonna actually ask if each panel could briefly introduce themselves and share their role within the PyLadies Global Council. Whoever wants to take it away. I can start. Um, hi, my name is Lynn Root. Um, I am the chair of the Global Council. Um, I'm also a member of the Python Software Foundation um, and a former vice chair of the board of directors for the PSF. Um, I am an engineer by day at Spotify, working on ML infrastructure, and I also teach at Columbia. Um, and I also knit and sew and paint and you know do things with my hands outside of programming. Um, I'll give it to Sarah next. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah. I'm from Nigeria. I'm part of the Paladis Global Council members. So uh, in Nigeria, I. I have a community in um, Latech, that's Larry Kakitola University, where I'm the founder of Pilates community there. I also work as a data analyst for Touch and Play Technologies, where I am the lead of insights and data analytics for the company. So I basically help them process data to make informed decision of their businesses. Thank you. And for me, well, I'm Tanya Lard. I'm also another of the members of the PyLadies Global Council. I'm also in the board of directors for the Python Software Foundation, and I'm a PSF fellow as well. Um, my day-to-day -day job, I am the director of Quantsite Labs, which is an organization, a not-for-profit organization, and we work on all things open source, basically trying to help with open source sustainability within the scientific Python ecosystem. So we spend a lot of our time finding ways to fund all of this work and hire maintainers and yeah, just do open source work day in and day out. Outside from work, I tinker with a lot of mechanical keyboards, like you can see over there. Um, I enjoy doing things like design, painting in general, and I spend a lot of time with my dog. I think we have a lot of fur babies that are floating around everywhere. So this is a universal experience, I'm glad to see. <laughs> but you know, I, I imagine, clearly you all know what the Pi Ladies Global Council is but a little bit of context to just to provide some history for those of you who may not have heard or have not engaged with the Global Council as much. The Global Council came together a few years ago. There was a group of us that was at PyCon US. Uh, Lynn had a really great sheet of paper with, uh, uh, you looked very excited taking notes. <laughs> but basically what we were talking about were some of the challenges that the global community faces when we're so disjointed. Because some areas have a lot of opportunity for investment. Some areas, they might need more access to and for support for things like content, finance, just seeing what other chapters are doing. So through that conversation, then we kicked off the Pi Ladies uh, Global Council, which is actually quite a really awesome group of people. As you can see here, we have a lot of um, we have a lot of diversity across the community represented. And we're just gonna be talking a little bit today about what these fantastic PyLadies do on the Global Council, what are some initiatives, as well as what are some things that we may all like to see in the future. So first things first, and I'll throw this one to, I'm gonna throw this one to Lynn. What, mo what motivated you to join the PyLadies Global Council? And what aspects of diversity and inclusion are the most important to you in doing this work? Oh, good question. Um, let's see. Well, what motivated me? Um, I've been involved uh, with PyLadies, I guess, for, um, I guess, over 10 years now. Um, 
Oof. And uh, I started uh, Pi Ladies of San Francisco in 2012 and kind of grew it to its largest um, organization at the time. Um, I had to move in 2016 in New York, but um, at the time it was the largest and I'm sure they're larger out there now. But anyways, um, as Lorena, you said, <clears throat> we kind of struggled with being very decentralized, um, but I love that aspect of it um, because, you know, we're able to like grow grassroots wise. Um, but I think that we could have better structure, you know, more support for our chapters. Um, if we had more structure, maybe we'd be more stable and you could, um, you know, more longevity with the organization as a whole and with individual chapters. And so I just kind of wanted to be a part of, you know, getting that set up and, and hopefully handing the reins over to other um, future leaders. Um, Let's see. What, what was the other question? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it was just around what mo what motivated you to join the council? What aspects of diversity inclusion do you think that the council's involved in that are really at the forefront of what the council's trying to think about? Maybe right now it's a lot of things. <laughs> Maybe there's a manicured list. I'm curious if anyone, uh, you know, Flynn, if you don't have a thought on that, feel free any of the other panelists to jump in and share your thoughts on that. Well, um, I mean, I have my own thoughts, but I do want to make space for other folks to, you know, to mention what they, what they think. Fantastic. You know what, Sarah, I'm curious, why did you want to join the Pi Ladies Global Council? So for, for me, right, the most important thing is the gender, um, Bias, the limitation of representation, representation of our gender, our female gender. So, back in my country, I have been to so many tech conferences, and I realized that we have a larger percentage of male in the tech industry, writing Python codes, doing all of all sorts of things. So I was like, I needed to be one of. Uh, I can just be one in. I I mean, I've been to so many conferences in Nigeria. I'm just the few ladies, I do find out that there are just few ladies attending those conferences. So I was challenged as a lady that I need to do something for my community to bring them together that we women can also actually write code. We can do what the men are doing. So I started my community back there in my school where I have small group. I started with a group of five, which I expanded to 50, 60, uh, ladies, where I started teaching them how to write Python programming co uh, languages. I also organized conferences. So from there, I saw that I, there's, I, there's so much thing I can also do to also represent um, Pi ladies globally. So that, what, that was what motivated me to volunteer to join the Pi ladies Global Council. That's amazing. That's really, really great growth. And you definitely are getting your flowers from us with all the cute emojis. So yeah. feel free to know that we're doing that for you. Yeah. Uh, Tanya, actually kind of blending into this question, how, do, how does the Global Council kind of collaborate with Pilates chapters around the world to foster unity and diversity within the community? I think that has actually been probably one of the most challenging tasks because like Lynn mentioned, um, the whole reason our, our pilot ladies structure is, a, I, I don't know, I would like to say it's like a federated model now where we have the Global Council, but then all the chapters are loosely attached to a central or, or governing, body, governing body. So I think for us identifying how much um, or how how tied that link between the ch the chapters and the global council and then to the PSF that is now our fiscal sponsor as well uh, has to be has been rather challenging just so I think we've tried to open the dialogue get a better understanding of the lay of the land understanding of what the chapters are currently doing how we can better support them and also how we can ensure the sustainability of the chapters themselves and the global council as a whole so that has been probably something that we've been focusing on for the last couple of years like just getting that understanding and also working as i said with the psf now to to establish its fiscal sponsory relationship because that also allows us um, to think more in terms of global of sustainability, long-term sustainability, and having not 
well, having dedicated funds and dedicated processes and mechanisms to better support the chapters and the organizers. Um, so I think that is what we've been working on, what we've been focusing a lot on, and also work in infrastructure, as I said, establishing those processes is critical um, to support the chapters. So it's been a lot of uh, pipe work, what I would say, like pipe work, logistics, operational work behind the scenes. Yeah, I know that that was a question I had been asked a few years ago is, how many pilot East chapters are there? And we didn't have a good finger on the pulse. We have the, we do have a list, but sometimes communities go dormant, as we all know. And so you all thinking about how to lay that foundation, that foundational work, and just use that to help you start guiding the conversations is obviously a you got to start somewhere. It's not it's not the most exciting, but it's it's the most instrumental. Yeah. So then in terms of in terms of uh, some some wins that we've had with the uh, global pie ladies community, do you do you, do any of you see some notable wins that really got you motivated or is making you excited? Um, then this is a question for anyone who wants to open that. Um, I think something that still keeps me motivated is we've, we've, we just came, well, we came out of COVID. It's still, all that time is very, very blurry. So I still feel like we just came out of COVID. And I've seen loads and loads of meetups and online communities and small local communities just die because of that, because people moved. People just moved back to closer to, their, to where their families were or they lost organizers or people changed jobs and whatnot. So I've seen a lot of meetups die. And I think it's been really, really inspiring seeing the resilience of our community, just like seeing how many meetups or how many pie ladies chapter, chapters like transition into online and then back into person or hybrid. And they're still very strong. I think we didn't have a lot of chapters that closed as a consequence of COVID. And even some that were in do went dormant are starting to pick up again. So I... I think that is pretty inspiring. That is a pretty lovely thing to see, to see the commitment and, and well, like how important by ladies in these groups are to many people, really. I think that's, I think that's what, Len, you were speaking to about the decentralized nature. Yes, we need to have some, uh, we need to have a centralized place to be able to think about shared resources and understand all the communities, but that, I think that goes back to your point about the decentralized chapters allows a lot of power at the lo at the hyper local level so that if people do want to get back into organizing, they can do it in a way that meets the safety and security needs, et cetera, et cetera, for their own given chapter. So it's, it's interesting to see how this model is kind of like a hybrid model. And I think you, I think that the council has been really good at kind of getting in front of that and trying, not trying to insert itself into every conversation. But, you know, in regards to uh, in regards to addressing cultural differences and to in, ensure an inclusive environment for all Pi ladies, has there been any particular challenges with that? Or how how are some ways that we're take that we're taking this on? Um, maybe I don't know, Sarah, if you have any if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, I do. I've thought of that. Um... They, for us, uh, it has been a lot of challenges trying to um, blend well with uh, be the larger, if not even the larger representation of ourselves in the tech industry. But at least we able to have a representation of women. I mean, a, for the significant amount in the uh, industry, I noticed uh, women are not we from the small groups to the larger groups. We are not easily motivated, so we need to organize conferences and to bring them us once together, I mean monthly. So we had to have a small group where we chat with each other. We invite speakers all over the country to come and speak so that we can motivate those um, ourselves so that we can see the importance why we need to be in the tech industry. So it actually has been challenging. It's not a, it has not been a smooth road, but with all our efforts, we're able to realize that we are seeing some uh, significant results because most of those ladies are now in a very good position right there now in the tech industry, doing something good for themselves. I had some 
um, people share their testimony of uh, the results of pilotage community in, in Nigeria, where from that community, they enter into the tech uh, world, and they now they, they, they find themselves succeeding in the tech world. So it's challenging, but we're able to crack that challenge. That's it. You know, and I think that leads very, I think that dovetails very nicely into how is it that individual Pilates members can contribute to the broader goal of diversity and unity within the community? Because uh, obviously there's a lot of organizations we've all been affiliated with. So I think Tanya and Lynn, you probably have some interesting former experiences that is related to the Python community, but maybe not necessarily just the Pilates community. So if either of you want to comment to that. You're speaking about like um, unity, um, you're helping with unity or sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, how can individual Pilates members contribute to the broader goal of unity and diversity within uh, the Python user space? Because obviously we know that Python is a big range of use cases, and it's not just at PyCon, it's not just PyLadies. There's, mm -hmm. as Tanya was pointing to, the scientific Python communities as well. So yeah, curious if uh, Lynn, or, uh, Lynn or Tanya, if you have thoughts on that. Yeah, I, have a, I do have a quick thought, and it's not actually like kind of technical related, to be honest. Um, and I said this in my um, intro talk that's gonna be shown later. Um, but I personally think that like what helps with Unity is it starts on the individual level, starts on the person level, and it takes, I guess, empathy, but also like confidence. Um, oftentimes you might be like the only woman in the room, in the meeting room or something like that. People will talk over you um, or not even notice that you're there. Maybe even repeat what you said like five minutes ago and take credit for it. Um, it's happened to me many times. It's pissed me off many times. <laughs> um, but I guess like um, what I would say to that is like, you know, speak up to be heard. Um, you know, don't raise your voice. Um, I mean, don't be afraid to raise your voice a little bit. Um, you can even, you know, rage quit um, a meeting to like make a point. But if you if you don't speak up, it's it's, it's going to continue. It's it's only going to get worse, right? Um, and so, like these little actions, these like micro actions, um, they're you know we start local. Um, but then it can have a butterfly effect and kind of create space for, for other people that, you know, need to be heard. And so it's, it's about like, you know, the small things that we can do to, to create welcoming spaces in the environments that we're in. I, I, I love that. I actually want to build on what Lynn said, because sometimes when we think in the space of open source or like community, when you, when you think about contributions, a lot of people tend to think that, it's only about big contributions, about spending loads and lots of time, lots of, of hours and spending a lot of time, I don't know, writing code and whatnot. But those are small actions, small contributions, even for example, if you're part of a pilotis chapter and, you, and you're a regular and you notice that there are a few new people like joining and they feel like out of place or they, they don't know anyone, like just welcoming them, welcoming them introducing them to others. Um, can make somebody's day or like experience 100 times better. Um, also mentoring others or offering any unique skills that you might have, even if it, whatever it is, like they're welcoming, they're very, very, very welcome. If it's writing, speaking, um, building networks, for example, Carol Willing is probably one of the best persons out there at building networks and she's an absolute multiplier because she knows a lot of people and she's always trying to find these opportunities to bring people that could be good allies or collaborators or actually just have something in common that is an incredible skill and that is very very valuable especially for us as women in tech or folks from marginalized and underrepresented groups because building that network opens so many doors for others so if that is something that you can also do um, or be an ally or be a multiplier that is an incredible contribution that you can make towards our community as a whole and with that we're actually going to be reaching the top uh, the end of our session here momentarily but I thought it might be nice to in this same theme are are there any specific opportunities for collaboration or support with the PyLadies community with the PyLadies Global Council or other projects maybe you're working on that you want to plug. And then we can go ahead and sign off with that. 
We can do reverse order. Tanya, if you want to take it away first. Um, I don't have any any initiatives that we are currently running, but I I would like to encourage anyone, if you have any idea on how we can make PyLadies better for the whole community or an event, for example, this PyLadies Con started something, an idea, something that somebody wanted to do and propose and just gathered a couple of folks and then brought it forward to the PSF and PyLadies School Council. If you ever have an idea and you want to find allies or support, you are more than welcome to reach out to the Global Council and we can see how feasible it is, how we can make it a reality. And yeah, I think that is all I have to say for now. Excellent, oh. Sarah, take it away. Okay, so um, I honestly have with Tanya. If you have any idea you want to share, I mean, no matter how little it is, it's something that can also help us to know if you have any thoughts on how we can progress as a, as a community, it's very much welcome. For me, I, I just involve myself with mentoring. If you need mentorship, you can always reach out to me anytime, any day, because I know that I started mentoring just one-on-one -on -one before I started mentoring a group of people. So I'm very big on mentorship. So if you need mentorship, I know that ladies, we need mentorship. We need someone that we have, someone that has an experience in this space. And her, I have experience, like I have two years experience, more than two years experience, if I can say, in, um, in this space. So if you want to, me to mentor you, I'm very open. You can always link up with me and I'll do that. And also, if you have any suggestion, fine. Thank you. And last but not least, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of um, like big and small contributions that people can make. Um, like if you're going to PyCon US, you can like get a PyLadies t-shirt for 20 bucks. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's 20 bucks, but um, it, it goes a long way. Um, but like even like time contributions, uh, that helps a lot. Like for, for organizers, uh, for chapter organizers, they, they put a lot of work in. And so if you have an event idea, you know, maybe you want to try hosting, um, you know, offer uh, your time. And I think a lot of people would be appreci appreciative of such things. Maybe you want to speak um, and like try out your talks in front of um, uh, fellow pie ladies. Um, so like, yeah, offering your time, even just like hanging out in Slack is, is, is great, a great contribution. So. Um, we, we appreciate everything and like also plus one to Tanya and Sarah, please, like if you have thoughts, ideas, you can find us all on Slack um, and, and we very, very much welcome any, any thoughts and ideas. Yeah, and on that note, do join the Pilate Slack. It's slackin.pilates.com, which is really easy to get into. Uh, we'd love to have the conversation and continue it there. But ladies, I want to just thank you all for your time. And I look forward to the rest of this conference. It's going amazingly. Have a great rest of your Pi Ladies Con. Thank you. I'll see you around. All right. Bye-bye. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs>